What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Kalila 12 year old. Stick around. All right, so we're back on Isla today. We're looking at the Kalila 12. And honestly, it's kind of shocking that I haven't touched on this one before. I feel like if you're a whiskey channel and you're already kind of like up and running, you should have covered all of the Isla basics, like all of the entry level staples from Isla. And I haven't, and I should. It's my duty. So Kalila and I go way, way back. This was one of my first loves from Isla. I used to love how gentle this was. Like there was a time when I was really into the softer side of Isla. I didn't want any of the big, bold, heavy, punchy flavors that we go with some of the other distilleries. So there was a while where I would have picked something like this over an Ardbeg 10 or a Port Charlotte 10, which is crazy. Those are better. But yeah, I just wanted gentler stuff at the time. And to be honest, that's not too far off from how I'm feeling nowadays. It might be the summer heat, might be a mood, might be a phase. But lately, I haven't been that interested in like big, heavy, punchy peak. Put differently, on a scale of Glen Cadam to Laphroaig, I would gravitate much more towards the Glen Cadam stuff recently. Um, so I'm happy that today's review isn't going to be something too, too heavy. It's really hot outside. Whatever. Um, and yeah, Kalila, like for being an Isla whiskey, for being something that is heavily peated, it is a smoky blast. It's a lot more restrained and as I said, more gentle than most other Isla offerings. I do realize there are some Kalila bottlings out there that say otherwise, but their standard line is not known for being especially punchy or bold or intense. And like I said, traditionally, that's what I've liked about it. Uh, now, this one here is, I think, exclusively bourbon matured, but it's a Diageo product. And of course, they don't tell us much. Now, this is one of those whiskeys. It feels like it's been around forever. I feel like most peat heads will have tried it and then moved on to bigger and better things or bigger and bolder things. Uh, it's not something that makes a lot of waves. Nobody rants and raves about it. It's not like a hot commodity on the whiskey scene, but I feel like everybody knows it and everybody's tried it. Then again, I'm sure plenty of people out there have not tried it. Some of you might have clicked on this video because you're curious about this whiskey and you want to know if it's worth picking up. You want to know what the flavors are. You want to know if it's worth the money. So let's find out. Let's jump into our review. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Well, this is, after all, a Diageo product, so we have 43%. We have chill filtration, and we have color added. So... So I actually do quite like this bottle. It's not super attractive or stylish. Honestly, there's not even that much to it. Uh, and I do usually like a little bit more pop than this, but I think this works. It's very clean, it's very simple. We literally have two colors, brown backdrop, um, no graphics, no designs on the label, but I just, I guess I like the simplicity of it. Three and a half out of five for presentation. Nothing here about being chill filtered. It does mention mid farb stuff on the back, so we know it's colored. It does say that it's lighter in body for an Isla whiskey. Nothing about cast breakdown, production details. There's no tasting notes. There's not much of substance here, and that's not that surprising. It's a Diageo product, but the look is nice. I did not add water. Let's try our nose. So this is bright for an Isla whiskey for sure. Bright uh, citrus, bright lemon, tangerine. We do have a salty maritime briny presence in here, but it's not as pronounced, it's not as forward as it might be from some other, some other Isla stuff. It's a little bit herbal mint, sweet mint, or uh, peppermint. We also have earth, we have twigs, we have hickory and yellow mustard barbecue sauce. And I even saw a review on Whiskey Base where a guy mentioned that this has tequila notes in the nose. And kind of, I can see it. Uh, it's, it's a nice nose. Now our palate. Okay, not a bad texture or intensity for the low ABV. Um, smoke and pepper up front, vanilla pods, smoked ham, 
uh, grilled pepper steak. We have lime, a bit of tequila again. We have salt, wood fire, and pine forest. Good stuff. And now the finish. Okay. We get more herbal and wood smoke elements in the finish. A lot of campfire peeness here. Um, honey, salt, earth. There's rosemary, grilled meat, peppermint, and sweet limes. This is a short to medium finish. So not bad stuff here. I think this is a bottle that gets overlooked a lot. Um, it does have the usual Diageo pitfalls. It's got a lower ABV. It's got a lighter profile. And the thing is, people who like peat usually want to go all in. Like they want to seek out the punchiest, densest, heaviest, most intense smoke and peat and brine that they can find. Like they are a really, really passionate bunch. The Lafroy crowd, the Ardbeg crowd, they love their peat. Shocking, none of them have died by pouring a bottle into an IV drip and shooting it directly into their veins. Also, please don't try that. Probably not good for you. But to be fair, that's not all Isla fans, that's not all peated whiskey fans. There are plenty of people out there who don't need that level of intensity all the time. And I think for those people, this is not a bad bottle to have on the shelf. Personally, I like the restrained character, and I like the Kalila House style. This isn't as medicinal as stuff like Ardbeg or Laphroaig. It's got more of an earthy, herbal, mineral tinge to it, which I like. Our smoke is there, it's very present, but it's not a monolith. It's a little bit on the lighter side, which allows us to hone in on some of the more peripheral notes with more clarity, more than we could do with, say, a Laphroaig. And while this is not an epic whiskey, it is definitely not Isla's finest entry-level offering, I do think it's a nice alternative. A lot of people talk about Bunnahaven being like the weirdo on Isla because most of their whiskey is unpeated. If Bunnahaven is the black sheep of Isla, Kalila would be the gray sheep. Like their stuff is heavily peated, but they don't quite fit in with the cool kids. Now, of course, Kalila is not a craft distillery like some other Isla brands. It's not Kilhoman. It's not Brickladdy. They're a big workhorse distillery. I'm pretty sure, I'm very sure, they put out more independent bottlings than any other brand on Isla. They're a big part of Diageo blends. They have a huge output. And there's this idea in some circles where a larger scale production negatively affects quality. And I'm not convinced of that. I think Kalila has a great house style. I think uh, Glen Livet, when they try, great house style. In fact, one of my favorites. You know, not every brand is going to be Oban or Edra Dower, where it's like this quaint little operation with limited output. There's no reason big workhorse distilleries like Kalila can't put out top-notch stuff. They do. They make good whiskey. And I do think this is a solid entry level. It's a solid introduction to peat. You know, if you're just getting someone into whiskey and you want to introduce them to the concept of peat, you know, of course, you could go all in, balls to the wall, and give them like a Ardbeg Cory Vrecken. But if you want a gentler segue, if you want to ease them into it, something like this would be a better option. Also, I want to clarify that this is not lightly peated. I wouldn't even call it moderately peated. Like, this is beyond stuff like Talisker. It is a fully-fledged, smoky, peated Isla whiskey. It's just gentler than most. And another thing. While it is a good segue into peat, while I think it's a great introductory whiskey, it's not something that's for beginners only. I do still like this one. It's not a favorite, but I enjoy it. My score is going to be 84, and I realize 84 doesn't sound that high, but it's a warm 84. This stuff is widely available. It's affordable. It does offer up something different. And you know, it's not a staple for me. It's not a whiskey I need to come back to over and over. But still, every few years, it does seem to find its way back onto my shelf, and I always welcome the warm, friendly, smoky character here. Um, it is still characterful. It does have its own unique charm. It's still Isla to the bone, and sometimes that's precisely what you want. So while the score is kind of average, I admit I do have a soft spot for this one. So I think we've got pretty decent value here. This one is priced as an entry-level whiskey in my market, which is precisely where it should be. It shouldn't be any higher than that. We have an age statement. Like I said, it's got its own unique charm. Yes, our specs are weak, but that's entry-level Diageo for you. 
Still good stuff, and I think if you're curious about it and my description sounds good, worth picking up. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Also, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried Kalila 12? What are your thoughts on it? Finally, down below in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next. I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.